We do. Now one of the legends of No regular lines. With the ears, the ears light up. Oh, turn them back on. Look at the shark. That's how fast we get in the line. These motherfuckers waiting for 45. All the way down towards car four, cars three or four. Line up on the start, please. Make sure you have your three glasses. Thank you. Head all the way down towards cars three and four. And stand on the start, please. Three and four, Natalia. Two minutes to get on the ride. This big old line right here. That's crazy. Now, the way that our production works, it's kind of broken up into three different parts. We have what we call pre-production. That's like the writing, the casting, getting everything ready for filming. The production, that's when we're actually filming, which we can do either on a set stage professor. or on our back lot. We can also film on location, which means that we go to a real place. We'll also rent out studio space from other studios out here. They'll rent out our space, too. We all kind of work together. Super you know, they very rarely, if ever, pan up because there's not really a ceiling there. Yeah. Over on the left-hand side, you guys are going to see a couple more of our sound stages that are currently being used Almost for the second done. season of Bel Air, streaming on Peacock, NBC's streaming network. It's hanging out in front of the Illumination Entertainment sign. Oh. That's because the company Illumination Entertainment brought us the movie Despicable Me. It's even the courthouse in To Kill a Mockingbird, Gregory Peck. But this entire area of our lot actually inspired some pivotal Huge scenes cars, look. for the movie Back to the Future. In fact, here's producer Bob Gale to tell you guys a little bit more. It was actually the back lot of the Cornhouse Square that inspired the walking entire climax for the future. I had scenes up in the hot tower on that ledge. Those legs are about wide. And I was Favorite movie. Oh, no, no, no. That's my favorite hot tower guy. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Remember me? <laughs> Just like old times. Got a leg in New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking it's cool, guys. I was just, you know, just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to the Lost Island, you're encountering monsters, and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. So I was thrilled with Universal right from the back to Star Island. And it was great to have you on the ride. Now we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to use glasses really. Don't put them on yet, but just put them in your hand because we're about to return to Sky. Trying to get that king car. Guys, on. I have a feeling that this is going to be a bumpy ride, so hold on tight to your loved ones. By that I mean your cell phones, your iPads, your purses, your bags. Don't lose anything in here. Be sure to remain seated with your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times and prepare yourself. Because we're going back. eco-friendly vehicles, foot power, and talking about our prehistoric vehicles from the, from the Jurassic World films. We have some of our vehicles here, including the gyrosphere, which you can see is missing something, right? The glass. The glass was never there. That was added in the production of CGI. That's because we use real glass since it's round. You would always get the reflection of the camera and of the crew taking right out of it. So we just add in that one CGI detail, makes it look great. Now, if you watch the original Jurassic Park movies, it's kind of crazy. You're like, how is the CG also wood and not real metal? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, it looks like 
some of the dinosaurs might have actually gotten loose. Um, hopefully they're all in the mobile lab. I, I think we're okay. Oh no. <laughs> Got him. Is that scene from Lost World Jurassic Park where he puts that mobile land up his clipping poster? Oh, look. Oh, it was in the bushes. Look some more. Oh, no. We are not going to drop Julianne Moore onto a plate of glass. It's not very nice. So, what we actually did was we filmed this in reverse. She's hooked up to a cable that pulls her backwards up into the air, and then when we show it in reverse, it makes it look like she's falling. So now that you know that, watch the scene one more time and see if you can see her kind of swing back and forth. We did put some speakers out here to play the sound of thunder that would normally be a production. We're going to do now for a bit. We got our lightning made by strobe lights. Hey guys. Hey there. Can we go ahead and turn on those sprinklers? I think like a four should be good probably. So to make the rain, you guys can see we take sprinklers like you would just use on your lawn. We put them out of view of the camera on these poles, and then instead of shooting the water down, it shoots the water up into the air, so then it falls naturally down to earth and looks more like real rain. Alright, guys, I think you get the idea. You can go ahead and kill those sprinklers. Guys, we can we can turn off the water. <laughs> It looks cooler at night time, look.
better at night. Um, way better. Dom's Charger, the Orange Julius. We actually even have a garage out here on our lot where we work on some of the Fast and Furious cars too. It's Damn. We walk by that, remember? Right now, we are headed to an iconic set, the Bates Motel, an original psycho house from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Be here. Um, throw that body out there. Uh, maybe he's helping a guest with their bags. That's nice. God, oh, okay, that's not good. Um, you know, maybe he won't see us. Everybody just stay quiet. Whatever you do, do not wave. Yeah, he's putting that body in the trunk. Just, huh? just said, don't wave hey, Norman. We didn't see anything, so you can just go right back inside. Okay, he's got a knife. We're going to get going. Norman, Norman, what are you doing? Come on, let's get some. Where are you going? Norman, you're away from the trail. All right. Get one of them. Get some. Anybody? Pour the red cord. Let me get you, right? Pour the red cord next time. That was almost as big as the God damn, look at it. Definitely fitting because again, Steven Spielberg alone looks cool at night, doesn't it? And it's not surprising it looks so good either because he had That's a real 747. the greatest production designers of all time, Rick Carter, to help execute his vision. The airplane will crash the site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Steven had. He said, yeah, you can sit down and talk about the world. And I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. Check it out, guys. Over a quarter million dollars for this set. Horse. Southern California Amusement Park, owned by former child star Ricky G. Over there, look into the winky world and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie Kid Show. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Why? Well, a little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy of the gold rush frontier town lies a sinister secret. It is smack dab in the center of the UFO hotspot. Hey, little Welcome alien back. kids. Welcome to the world. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, 
My whole family will protect you. Yeah. Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I'm in the middle of this. See what I'm talking about? Call you back. Man. It was on vibrate. Thank <laughs> you. 